A sole rare team that generates you bare money, regular cash flow every single week. Many people talk about the so-called threshold team as the holy grail of sole rare, something that every sole rare player should have. But what actually is a threshold team and is it still worth building one now that sole rare will change the rewards and the requirements for threshold teams starting next season? Let's check this together and I think the answer we'll get will be very very interesting for a lot of you. The so-called thresholds are fixed rewards that sole rare give out every single game week for hitting either 205 or 250 points with your team in the all-star rarely. Very important to note the threshold only exists in the All-Star Rare League. There's no threshold in any other league in so rare. And currently it is still the way it has always been. If your All-Star Rare team gets a score of above 205 points in a game week, then you will earn 0.01 Ethereum. Currently that is 27 euros. And if your All-Star Rare team gets above 250 points, then you'll get double the amount, 0.02 Ethereum, currently 54 euros. So the thresholds are tied to Ethereum and depending on how high or low Ethereum is currently valued at, the amount of money you'll get in euros will of course also also vary then. But as most of you might know, so rare will change that starting from the new season 2022-2023, so in August. From then on, every time your all-star rare team gets at least 205 points, you will get $25 worth of Ethereum, and if your team gets 250 points, then you will get $50 worth of Ethereum. And currently you can also still use one common card in the all-star league with four other rares, and that's what many people are doing. Since goalies are so expensive, most people do use a common goalie here, as I've been doing it as well, but this won't be possible anymore next season than either. So then you will need five rare cards to compete and the rewards overall will mostly be lower as you saw right now it's more than $50 and $25. So is it even still worth playing with a threshold team on so rare next season? That is the big question. So let's see what kind of players you actually need for threshold teams. We'll go ahead and build a potential threshold team for next season and then we'll see what would we win with this team. Is it worth it or not? There is one thing that every threshold player needs above anything else and that is consistency. I can't stress this enough, there is nothing more important for threshold teams than having players in it who start consistently, I would say more than 90% of the team's games, and who score points consistently. That means you want players who get minimum 40 points every single game and preferably rather 50. So for example, this looks very decent for a threshold player, rarely any super low scores and plays most games. While this does not look good for a threshold player, this is Jeremy Doku, he's more injured than fit, great player, but he just doesn't score consistently. And when he plays, he does get amazing scores, 86 sometimes, but often also 25 or so when he only gets subbed on because of match fitness. So this is not a good threshold player. We rather want players who aren't the big stars getting that 80, 90, 100 points as long as they get their 40, 50 points every game and play as many games as possible. And that's absolutely fine for us. And so, of course, an even better threshold team consists of players that play international football with their club. So in midweek, when European games are on, you can get a threshold as well so that instead of just one one threshold, $50 on the weekend for example, which is already nice, but then you can be getting two thresholds, $100 in one week. And the absolute pinnacle would of course be if they play for their national team as well, but that is not a must. So here we go, this is an example of a threshold team that you could potentially build for next season. Again, just an example, don't copy these players blindly, there is so so many combinations that you could use, I literally just built this up very quickly using SoRare data. For the sake of visualization, and now let's see who's in here, what points do they score, and what rewards would they be getting us? Is that worth it? Also worth noting that I went with five players who will probably, possibly, all play in Europe next season. So that's why the team costs a little over 2,000 euros. You could very well be getting a far cheaper team. But of course, this team is also going to get you more rewards due to them playing in midweek in European games. First of all, now, of course, we need a rare goalie. We cannot go with a common card anymore. And I went for Marvin Schwebe, goalie of 1. FC Köln. He became the starting goalie this season for Köln. And they are on a great track to play European football next season and yes he does cost a little over 1000 euros and that means half of the price of this whole team but I mean we need a rare goalie and he scores very very well then I went for a Union Berlin duo Robin Knoche center back is also very very consistent 47 48 49 this is what we like to see nothing huge that makes him crazy expensive he's only 169 euros which is not much for a player that always plays and will feature in Europe next season probably and Rani Kedira more or less the same thing Sami Kedira's brother basically always plays for Union, great scores, that's what we like to see for threshold teams 
40 50 range that's cool and he's also the cheapest player here 159 euros only i think he's a bargain to be honest then for the forward it's always going to be a little more expensive i went for bright osahi samuel is a winger for fenerbahce english guy he's been doing very well this season 387 euros but you see he's also the best scoring player in the team at least lately and regular starter 100 of the last five 100 of the last 15 88 percent of the last 40 as well that's what we like to see. And for the extra player, you can use any position. Of course, we want to save money. We want to get the cheapest team possible. We're not going to use another goalie or another forward. We're going to use a defender or a midfielder. Since those two positions are simply the cheapest. I went for Clinton Mata. He's a defender from Club Brusche. And you see, he, yeah, he's probably the second highest scoring player in the team. Always plays for Brusche at least over 90% and he costs 266 euros once again no buying recommendation for any of these players just build this team so we can see what would they have won us so red data luckily has this tool where we can see how these players would have performed together if we had them in the team for the last months i put it on last three months and there we can see they played seven game weeks together in the last three months and here we can see the score so let's focus on next season and take those 25 dollars and 50 dollars that we're going to get for the thresholds next season as a reference and let's see 250 points here we have above 250 points here we have that here we have that here we have that here here and here so that's seven times in the last three months that these five would have got us 250 points or more and with next season's rules that's already immediately 350 dollars then we still have 247 here and 208 here so that's another 25 dollars twice being over 205 points so another 50 dollars and then we can fairly say that if we had used this team in All-Star Rare for the last three months as a threshold team, that is seven big thresholds and two small thresholds. Using next season's rules, that's $400 in three months. That's absolutely not bad, I would say. And keep in mind that these guys didn't all play in Europe this season. And next season, if they will, then of course you'll have more game weeks, you'll have more chances to hit thresholds. Now let's assume all of these five do end up playing in Europe next season. I'm pretty sure in the first three months of the season, you would easily be getting... 10 big thresholds and that's $500. Of course, when you see such a team cost 2,000 euros, it looks massive and you think, oh my God, I'm never gonna get that back in rewards, but you actually can. Got no scientific proof backing this, but I would definitely say such a team would easily, easily get you $1,000 in one season in rewards. Because keep in mind, on great lucky weeks, you can also hit points like this, 330 points, and that might get you even a rare card. That could very well be another few hundred euros. And also, of course, you can use these guys for as many seasons as they are playing. Like, it's not over after one season. They're not useless after one season. Play this team for two years, and as long as these players are still playing, of course, and you will probably have made those 2,000 euros back. And you will still have the players holding a value. So if you ask me next season, it's still absolutely worth it to build a threshold team. I'm going to be playing a threshold team for sure. Absolutely no doubt about it. It's just a regular cash flow coming in. And that is so, so vital. You can't underestimate that. Even if it's only 25 or $50 per game week, I mean, that adds up. It really does add up and can be very helpful for your SoRare journey. Yeah, so once again, all of these five players are sheer examples that I found doing a one-hour SoRare data research. I don't own any of these cards. I'm not trying to pump prices up or anything. Thing, but if they do go up, there's plenty of great threshold players. For example, you can go here to Rani Kedira and you can just go similar players. So Ray Data will show you so many players that are similar to him and that are suitable for thresholds. And also it's probably important to note that I'm just assuming Köln and Union Berlin play in Europe next season. They're not guaranteed yet, so you are probably better off to buy your threshold team when those decisions are made after the season, when you know who will play in Europe and who won't. But that also takes us to our next question. We've now sorted threshold teams are still worth building, at least in my opinion. But when should you buy your players then, if you don't have any threshold players yet? In my humble opinion, which could be wrong, you're best off to buy these players now in the next few weeks, right after the season's end in Europe, as long as it's European players, of course. I've said it so many times, I definitely believe they are going to rise and rise and rise as we approach the new season over the summer. And then in August or September, when the new season has already started or is starting, probably prices are going to be higher than they are right now. If you were planning to build a SoRare team for next season and you do have some cash left right now, I would recommend you to go buy it in the next weeks so that you'll be able to get your threshold team with the lowest money investment. And then of course you also minimize your risk and it won't take as long to get your investment back in threshold in rewards then. Yes guys, I'm personally looking forward a lot to the next season. I'm going to be building a sick rare team, I think in Champion Europe or Challenger and then a threshold team that runs on the side and gives me those regular rewards as well. And now I want to know from you guys, will you be building a threshold team as well 
of course, it's not the holy grail. It depends on your personal situation. What do you want of Sora? Do you want regular cash flow? Then the threshold teams are the best way to go. Do you have a smaller budget, maybe below 500 euros? Then it's not worth going into rare and it's not possible either. And you'll be better off with a limited team. I'm going to make a lot more videos about different strategies on Sora, but I think the threshold strategy is still great, still worth it. And also feel free to let me know your favorite consistent threshold players in the comments. Let's be supportive. Maybe some underrated bargains there. Maybe we can help each other out again. If you are not playing so rare yet for some reason and still want to start for the next season, I can only say it again. I think it's a great entry point right now. And definitely don't forget to use an affiliate link to sign up. You can use mine as the first in the description, but you can also use anyone's affiliate link. Just make sure you do use one because if you just sign up without an affiliate link, then you will not be getting that free limited card that you will get when buying your first five cards of the new auctions market with an affiliate link used. That was a quick one, but I think very important video. See you in the next Sorare video. Sorare Fiago is out. Peace.